Uh, my name's Prue Venables and I'm a potter. When I look at the work that I started making right, right back at the beginning when I started to be a potter, it was much more about making tableware, but gradually over time my work has become much more to do with sculptural issues of space and volume and line and to be much more simplified and refined back, but in a sense, actually more complex. No longer is it governed by what you might use it for, but what it might reflect. And some of it may be quite obviously functional, and some of it is, is no longer really all that functional, but it's actually about issues of holding a space. It often refers to function, but sort of obliquely. The response often is, People, people will say, oh, it looks like a spoon or something, but could you possibly use that? And I think I'm playing with the idea of things having a functional reference, but not actually being fun so functional anymore, um, mostly. A very significant potter in my life is a man called Takashi Yasuda. And he described the making of functional work in terms of, or making of tableware in terms of if you put a brick on a table and put food on it, you have a plate. And so it's that sort of thinking that I find that very exciting, you know, because we're so dominated by the things that have, are around us and the definitions that fit with them, that to, to take something completely out of context and use it to, to take the place of those things is really, I think that's what I, find really amazing. So that it's it's a sort of adventure. It, and it's an adventure in curiosity and and playfulness, making something that perhaps is not meant to be used, but perhaps could be used. And but it's a sort of the result of a of a growth of a whole lot of areas of practice. And and often what happens in in a life where you do something for a long time you become just very involved in the process in, and the thinking that happens step by step over many years. It becomes a bit like breathing and eating, that you, some of it you do without thinking, some of it you do um, as part of a bit of an adventure. It's, it's all about an exploration, but you don't always know where it's leading. And I, that's the way I like to work. I don't know where it's leading. When you, when you work with porcelain, generally you have to work pretty slowly. It's, it's a material that's very unforgiving. If you do something too quickly, it might collapse or um, warp in the firing or something. It's, it's, it needs really time and attention. And I think in that way, it suits me very much. I don't tend to jump, make large jumps. Um, or if I do, I don't exhibit them for a long time because they're not ready. It takes me a long time to actually really make a new form that feels that it's resolved well enough to exhibit. So the thing is about the wheel, you have the capacity to make something very quickly. But I think the, um, what I've realised over the years is how to actually work with it as a technique alone to form something that, that is what you want to make is uh, much slower. You can't depend on it to do anything that you want it to do. You have to learn to be with it and be almost in, from inside it and then sort of coax it. Um, I've done a bit of, when I went to China, I did, I did quite a lot of casting and that's a very different process. But when you throw porcelain, it, it, it's, um, it tends to want to not do what you want it to do, <laughs> not behave. 
there's something about the quality of porcelain that's really gorgeous. It's translucent, glowing, sort of magical sort of material. And it's quite seductive in a way. It's hard to stop using it. Porcelain is a material that has defined limits. There are some things you just cannot do um, without it collapsing. And so when you look at the things that are made in China, which has thousands of years of experience of making things in porcelain, you see very particular shapes. And as soon as you, once you go there and start trying to make other shapes, you realize why they make those shapes, because they're the ones that work. And so when you work with a material like that, it starts to govern your thinking because you think, well, I can't do that because it won't work. It'll collapse or you've got to, there are, you start to put limits on what you can do. But by combining metal and, and porcelain, I can step outside those limits. I can make the porcelain component within the limits of what porcelain will allow me. And I do work right at the edge of that. And then I can make a metal component that, that I can't make in porcelain. So it's, it's, it's actually enabled me to expand my thinking and be more playful. And it's let me step outside the boundaries. I generally, I generally build from one thing that I know into the next thing. So everything that I make is a bit of an, a small step from the, something I know. And I find by making things over and over again, they become really integrated into, into myself. And when you make something that's going to be altered, you have to understand both what you need to make in the beginning and also what it's going to become. And it's, it takes a lot of time to, for those two things to become really integrated into your system. But everything that I make has, has a step-by-step -step process that's come from something else. Life's never simple in a, and sometimes it, there are so many things to be done before you can actually, I can actually sit there and just do it, just make. I think making things is a, a life imperative. It is a very grounding experience. If it's, if it's just flowing, it's, it's just the most wonderful feeling. Um, but it doesn't always do that. So sometimes it's really tricky and you think, oh, the clay's not right, it's, it's too soft, it's not going to work, Th things start flopping, it doesn't work, it's difficult. And other times it's just like, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So when I sit at the wheel, I don't know what it's going to, I don't know what it's going to feel like on that, in that moment until I actually start. But, but it's a good place to be.